Good evening, YouTube. This is our future and the powers with the people. Just want to let you know I am a respiratory therapist. Been doing this for 21 years. Um, and I've been kind of all, all over the place doing this. I wanted to show you our equipment room here. Uh, so we want to talk about COVID-19 for a few minutes. And uh, the first thing I want to say is, is, does it look like there's a ventilator shortage? <laughs> there's not. Okay, as a matter of fact, we're running less ventilators right now than uh, we would normally run. Uh, <clears throat> and that's because people are just staying home. They're not having elected surgeries. Uh, I want to talk about the numbers uh, and the criteria that goes into uh, what a COVID patient is or a patient under investigation, what's also called a PUI. Uh, basically, right now, and the way it has been the last couple of months when they locked us down, is that any patient that came in with a respiratory problem uh, was labeled COVID. Now that doesn't matter if it's uh, you got stage four lung cancer and pancreatitis and heart disease and liver failure and everything else, uh, you're, you're, you're still, because you come in with breathing problems, uh, you're labeled a COVID patient. Now we have one lady uh, that could do the testing at first um, that would go, those tests went to the CDC, only one person. Uh, was qualified to uh, to test that for the whole whole place, so several of these patients under investigations uh, were never tested, uh, <clears throat> and maybe they died or whatever. Uh, then they would die of COVID, and not of stage four lung cancer or these things. This is clear that this is what's come out. Every single patient that needs one of our pieces of equipment here. Uh, any of this, if they need any of this stuff, okay, then they are a rule out COVID. And these tests have taken as long as two or three weeks uh, to get back. We're finally getting what they claim. They've been claiming this for a month, but we're finally getting in-house testing. That's going to change the game. And I think that's, that's what's going on at most places. And what that also means is, is that now you're going to see the numbers either go up or go down. And I would suspect we're going to see them spike up and then spike down real quick. And and this is the reason for the number of deaths. So you have to recognize that if every single patient is under COVID uh, investigation and dies, then that goes into a COVID death. And they're showing the numbers like a football game to scare you. They're showing you loading bodies into a tractor trailer to scare you. I've never in my career ever seen bodies loaded into a tractor trailer. It just doesn't happen. I wonder if those were even bodies. I really don't believe it. All of this stuff is fake. Okay, look at our ventilators. And let's talk about ventilators and why there would be a shortage of ventilators. Well, this is non-invasive ventilation here, CPAP or BiPAP. This is a mask that gets strapped on you and we can help you breathe with that. We're not allowed to use those, okay? Um, we're finally opening it up to where we can use them a little bit, but for the most part, since COVID came out, they said absolutely not. That's going to cause uh, the virus to spread. Uh, all over the place by spraying aerosols everywhere and so we can't use it you have to let the patient crash and go straight to a ventilator okay traditionally that's not the way we would treat a patient we also have aerosolized medications bronchodilators we're not allowed to use those either so everything that we would traditionally do uh, we're not allowed to do every patient that comes in no matter what their history is labeled a COVID under investigation so if that patient dies, that becomes a COVID uh, death, okay? So there's a lot of weird things going on. When it comes to the testing itself, I've been looking at this for about a month now, uh, but you can also look for yourself. They were open about it on CBS News the other night. Um, they're not testing for a virus. Like if you go to, you get sick, you go to the hospital, traditionally you get tested for flu A and B. Flu A, by the way, is H1N1, the one that killed everybody in 2008. Uh, 
they'll test you for RSV. Those are actual viruses that, that you, you know, they, they will test you for. Uh, this COVID test is different. They're testing for an RNA sequence uh, from a reaction to the virus. And look this up. Please look it up. They're not testing for a virus. There's not one test that tests for a virus. Okay, then they put it in a PCR. It's a PCR test, which means it amplifies it. So if there's any little, one little shred of that RNA sequence um, from a damaged cell um, in, your, in your lungs or in your uh, nasal passage, you're going to test positive. Now, that can come from cancer. That can come from radiation. That can come from several things. So, and then you hear all this talk on the news about... Uh, antibody therapy and all this other kind of stuff people wanting to donate plasma everything else but they're not talking about the virus itself they're not testing for the virus itself and that's a big big issue because that makes you say well is this as infectious as they're telling us it, it is because if it was as infectious as they're telling us it is these would all be in use and everybody would be dying and we're not seeing that okay um <laughs> it, it, this is unbelievable every bit of this has been created okay if you cannot use the the non-invasive ventilation and have to go straight to this the ventilator that creates a ventilator shortage but you also want to ask why is ford and gm in the business of making ventilators when we have plenty of companies that already make ventilators you know what kind of ventilator is it what does it do who's going to train us on those ventilators and um you know how's it going to be tested uh and then what is the cost per ventilator that the united states is paying for in gm for these these products uh that really aren't obviously needed so all this talk you hear on the news by the governors and everybody else, we're having shortages of ventilators. It's not true. It's not true. Okay? So how about healthcare workers? Yeah, we're getting one or two healthcare workers are coming up positive. And, you know, that, that would be expected. But I would actually expect a lot more healthcare workers to get sick and come up positive. And we've had some extreme uh, contamination issues from patients that, didn't show any symptoms, wasn't a patient under investigation, and then all of a sudden came up positive, and none of those healthcare workers uh, came up positive, got sick, carried a fever, or anything else. Just to show you real quick, here's my uh, PPE that I have to wear. <clears throat> Sorry. Here's my PPE that I have to wear. There's an N95 mask uh, in here, and a uh, face shield, and of course we got some gowns and stuff, but we're going... Uh, wearing this for five shifts uh, minimum before we can get a new one all right so I'm contaminating myself every time I put this in 95 mask in the shield in this bag it's contaminating it's contaminating over and over and over again and then I'm putting the mask on okay I'm still here I'm not sick and nobody else is either except with the exception of one or two if you look at the areas that these people are in where the hot spots are uh like such in georgia as albany uh and atlanta you really have to say well why are all these places happening in these condensed areas uh well <laughs> i truly believe this is uh something else that's causing this all these patients have comorbidities uh they're all older the ones that are you know in life-threatening uh situations and and the mortality rate is really not that low so <laughs> If you actually look at what's going on compared to H1N1, H1N1 was a million times more scary than the COVID-19. Uh, when it comes to a vaccination, uh, you cannot vaccinate yourself really for a sinus infection. It's just not going to work. Um, you can't vaccinate yourself for every little human element that there is. You know, people are going to get sick. What traditionally happens with viruses such as this, if this is a virus, and I'm not so sure it is, but you're going to have a, a real spike such as in SARS, Zika, um, H1N1. Uh, you're going to have a spike, and then it's going to lose its, its efficacy, and it's going to drop. And, and the mortality rate's going to drop. I mean, the people that get really sick is going to drop, you know. So you have this initial little bang, and then it drops off. That's what a virus normally does. I'm not completely convinced this is a virus. I've been doing this a long time. Um, do your own homework. Do your research. But the equipment 
should speak for itself. Does this warrant shutting down the country? Does this warrant um, six to ten trillion dollars in economic stimulus just for this country? Uh, does this warrant all these things that are being put in place? I mean, do, does this warrant um, the trillions lost? Does this warrant locking everything up, beaches, you know, uh, hiking trails, tennis courts, uh, the, the bars, restaurants, pool halls, uh, um, schools? Does this warrant this? I, I really don't think it does. Um, not even close. So y'all need to be asking some, some really hard questions here and questioning your government and questioning the people in charge and also questioning your doctors because the doctors believe this stuff just as much as everybody else does, but they're not looking at the real information. All they're doing is, is they're told something and, hey, guess what? They got lives, they got jobs, they got everything else you got plus some. They don't care. I mean, they do care, but they're not going to go look it up. They're not going to look up exactly what this test is. They're not going to look up that, hey, why aren't we getting these infection rates? They're, they're, you know, they look up the little things that they're told to look up, and that's it, just like anybody else would. Okay, so, you, you know, these questions really have to be asked. And then for the Trump supporters out there, I'm going to ask you something. Think about this for a minute. We're doing the same thing they're doing in France. We're doing the same thing they're doing in Italy. We're doing the same thing they're doing in the UK. So does that mean Trump's really in charge of this whole thing? Because I really don't think he is. I think he's being told to do what he's doing, and, and, and that's the way it is. I mean, it, this is a deep state, Illuminati stuff, and <laughs> it, it, this is the real deal. And they're shutting the world down, okay? Y'all people really need to understand this. The world, okay? And they're putting our kids and grandkids in severe debt uh, to, that, that, that will never be paid off. And, and if you, you think of how many taxes you're paying now, can you imagine what our children and our grandchildren are going to have to pay for this scam? So please look up, do your homework, ask questions, look at our equipment room, ask, why can't we use this if we're not seeing the infections? You know, why can't we use this non-invasive equipment? Why are we having auto manufacturers make ventilators? Who's testing the ventilators? What kind of ventilator? Price per ventilator? All these things. The economic stimulus package. You, you know, is this going to be another corporate bailout where they, you know, give themselves million-dollar bonuses while we starve? I bet you it will be. So this is a real dangerous time we're coming into. When it comes to the vaccination, I promise you,